The last year took poker listings to some of the biggest poker events on the planet to talk to the biggest poker stars in the game. Before we dive into the new year, we want to take you through the top 10 most memorable interviews from 2015. Number 10. The Legend of Scotty Wynn Poker players nowadays are known to throw a tantrum or two at the table, but according to Scotty Wynn, who's been playing live poker for over 30 years, it's nothing compared to how things were back in the day. When you get mad, you get mad. I used to get mad, jump on the table, and dance in the seat. <laughs> Can't do that anymore? <laughs> Can't do that shit no more. Penalty. <laughs> Anybody else 10 minutes, Scotty, today. <laughs> Number nine. The Romano brothers reunited at last. Brad Garrett and Ray Romano are famous for joking around on TV, and after catching them playing together at the World Series of Poker in Las Vegas, it's safe to say not much has changed. Uh, if I can get to day three, that's my record. My day three is my record. But you know, after dinner, things get hairy on day two. Yeah, yeah, yeah things are hairy. Yeah. Hey, I'm hungry. Speaking of Harry, right. your girlfriend got the reservation. Ding, yeah, a ding, ding, a ding, ding, ba, 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 ding, 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 ding. Cut. Number eight, don't break William Hung's heart. William Hung singing country music at a karaoke bar in the middle of Malta's biggest party district? It's real and it's spectacular. I don't tell my heart, my eggy, breaky heart. I just don't think you understand. Number seven, the money or the title? A lot of emphasis is put on money in the poker world, but the truth is, most of us started playing because we loved the game and just wanted to win. For this year's Battle of Malta final table chip leader, Yuri Gilboa, it was definitely about more than just the money. For, for me, the, the, the money is less important. The more important is the winning. Because I'm, I like to win, I'm a very competitive person in all, of, all my life. And for me, I can give up half of the money to take the prize. Number six, the best is yet to come. Most people who reach their 70s spend their time looking back on their lives, but when Pierre Nouville made the final table of the WSOP main event, he showed everyone it's never too late to look forward and believe that the best is yet to come. I think that I am in the first day or second day now of the three best months of my life because I will enjoy, most probably, each minute, each hour, each day. I think it's really fantastic. Number 5. Anatoly Filatov's Spirit of Poker Russia's Anatoly Filatov won this year's Spirit of Poker Award for Most Inspiring Player, and after hearing him speak, it's not surprising why he's inspired so many young poker players. I'm trying to promote all this stuff to players that we all just in the same boat, we do all this stuff and we have to respect each other and have fun. That's, it doesn't matter like, how much money you lose or win. Number 4. The Magician at this year's ARIA 500K. To most people, dropping half a million dollars on a poker tournament would be insane. But for high stakes pros like Antonio Esfandiari, it's what it's all about. When you put up a half a million knowing that, you know, 85% of the time you're gonna get nothing on, no return on your money, you know, but just that rare time that you actually do well and that one time that you happen to win, it's worth that feeling, that rush. Number three, Chris Moneymaker's Bluff of the Century. One week in 2003 changed Chris Moneymaker's life forever. And according to the former world champ, if you keep trying and never give up, one moment could change everything for you too. Put yourself in spots to get lucky, put yourself in spots to, to do well. And uh, if you continue to do that, you, know, you just gotta hit it one time. And that one time can set you up. Number two, Phil Hellmuth's 420 moment. Most poker players know that in 1989, Phil Hellmuth became the youngest player to ever win the WSOP main event. What they don't know is the moment Hellmuth decided to become a world champ. I was never a big drug guy, I was never a big drinker, but it was like April 1987, and I was drinking, and I smoked pot, and it was like two in the afternoon. I'm in Madison, Wisconsin, I go to this little bar, and my friends are playing pool for $10 a game. Yeah, maybe I had $15,000 in the bank, and I'm trying to have fun, but I'm like, 
you know, I went over to the door and I opened this door and boom, the sunlight hit me. And it's just dancing around all the sunlight. And I'm like, what the hell are you doing with your life? Got in a taxi and went straight home and rolled up all these goal sheets for the rest of my life. And you know, the number one goal was to win the main event. And it was like a year and a half later that I actually pulled it off. Number one, Jason Kuhn on gratitude. We followed Jason Kuhn as he played two of the world's biggest poker tournaments. And even though he was down over $600,000 by the end of the week, he was still able to count his blessings and remain grateful. More opportunities will always come up and you gotta get back on the horse and you gotta get back to living your life and, and being happy and, and have a lot of gratitude for everything that I do have. I have a um, wonderful girlfriend, great friends, great friends and family that you've met. Um, and uh, oh, just an unbe unbelievable opportunity, you know.